YouTube, what is going on? It is your boy Keezy. It ain't easy being Keezy. And today we're going to be talking about like five or six of like the worst fashion trends that I got into since like middle school until now. So without further ado, let's get it. Okay, so before I start this video, I got to give a big shout out to Alex Avalos. He has a really large YouTube channel about fashion and he does a lot of videos about like like five worst hype beast trends fashion prediction trends and stuff and just to be honest i've taken some of those ideas like starting my youtube channel now for about a year kind of manipulated it in my own my own style so to speak so like this video is kind of like inspired from his video as well i just want to put that out there so it's not like i'm copying anybody outright so anyways big shout out to alex okay so for the first trend that i'm going to bring up that i kind of like regret i guess like, maybe that's the best word for it or like i don't i just definitely wouldn't dress like that anymore is baggy clothes i know that this idea of baggy clothes has now surfaced or resurfaced of course because of fear of god and other brand names that are out there other high-end fashion labels are starting to make a lot of more silhouettes that are not necessarily like boxy but uh, just oversized in general so i think the word oversized in today's times is completely different and baggy in today's times is completely different than what it used to be in like the early 2000s the baggy i'm talking about is the early 2000s it was literally middle school going into high school and i got into like the skate culture life and as we know being a skater like a lot of skaters wore baggy clothes and then this was also a transition of time where uh you know skating and hip-hop were kind of just like emerging and kind of like I guess you could say merging together. I think that's the best words for it. In addition to that, hip hop at the time, it was like a lot of people wore baggy clothes, whether you skated or you didn't skate at all. But a lot of my friends wore extremely baggy clothes. I would wear South Pole pants, which is now right now is so cringy. Um, but yeah, I used to wear big South Pole pants that were not my waist size. I would wear like a size 36 or like a size 38. Mind you, back then I was like a true size 32. Maybe I can even squeeze into like a 30. But for whatever odd reason, I thought it was dope to wear 38s. So just like picture that really quick. Also during the time of big South Pole, big baggy jeans that you can probably fit like two people in it was also a time where uh, big white tees were in. So I would wear like huge white tees. It would be like a size large which in those days size large was not really a size large if you buy a size large tall tee like it literally fit like an xl or like a double xl like they were huge they were massive t-shirts and i wish i had photos of it i don't really have photos of myself rocking it i didn't really take that many photos of myself when, like back in the day but yeah it was it was a it was a thing like they, they were sold at liquor stores maybe they are still today i don't know but they're sold at like most of like those hood stores if you're from northern california if you go to like the fresh society or whatever those places are called or so fresh clothing or something like that um they usually sell like pro club t-shirts behind the counter and i used to just buy a ton of blanks it would be like all white blanks all black blanks all green blanks uh or sometimes like all red and like that trend for me it was it was big and like not only was it big for me like i kept it strong and i kept wearing baggy clothes even though like the trend was already kind of over and I like me getting up on camera now and talking about this is, is kind of like ridiculous. Just basically, before I end off this first one, just just picture this. Just picture like Dipset, like early 2000s, mid 2000s Dipset on me. Okay, the clothes. All right, like maybe minus the bandanas. Actually, if there was a couple months in between there. I was trying to rock bandanas underneath my hat. Like that was okay. That was that was that was that was horrible okay super cringe i don't think i have any photos of that pray to god i don't have any photos of that it was during it was during those times just big t-shirts huge pants uh big like uh, i probably had like air maxes on or something like that uh and of course the huge huge fitteds and whatever but you you, you get the point it, it was bad i don't ever wish for it to come back which of course baggy is kind of debatably coming back but i don't think it's going to come back in that fashion like that fashion i i think a lot of people pray that fashion will never come back so i mean you get my point so i mean with all that being said let's just move on to the next one item okay so for the next trend that i like fell into that i didn't even realize how bad it was until like later on was wearing oversized fitted hats people that watch my channel i think a lot of people might know that i have a smaller head i've made like three or four videos now about like how to like find the best hats for smaller heads and stuff so I mean, if you get the point, like, I don't have a nice shaped head that can fit into a lot of hats, but I loved hats, and I've always loved 
new era hat since like the beginning and I've always actually worn this ace cap since high school all the way up until now ironically what I would do to compensate my weird shaped head in my mind to like make it look better is that I would buy fitted caps that were like two or three times too big and like I guess it was kind of more acceptable back then because a lot of the clothes were baggy a lot of the rappers were you know still wearing fitted caps that were like way too big for their head uh, but that trend kind of only lasted maybe like six months to almost a year uh, until it kind of died off but mind you I did it for like three four years like I did it for a long time and it would be like any fitted cap I would instead my head is like a naturally a size seven or seven and an eighth which is tiny uh, but instead I would buy like a seven three eighths or seven and a quarter which is like two or three sizes up from my natural size and then I would tuck my ears behind the hat it, it just wasn't a good look in fact it was funny I, I thought that doing that would make it look better but like looking back at it now it actually made it look worse because my head is I have a small head like a small dome like this the size of it is small so ironically wearing a bigger hat on top actually makes your head look even smaller which is <laughs> which is not it's just not a good look you know what I mean like just me thinking about it right now I'm like damn like what was what exactly was I thinking during those times you know what I mean so yeah anyways I mean I think you get the picture try my best to flash more photos here but let's go ahead and move on to the next one item so for the next trend that I am looking back on now and it might be one of the worst trends that I followed was buying denim that was like overly distressed current times right now you can still go buy denim that is like overly distressed and I'm gonna try my best to show pictures here of overly distressed denim in some cases for like higher end denim there are some cases where you can buy the denim and it, it's like purposely over distressed I was back then buying a lot of denim that was like sold in hood stores like on market street san francisco I would buy them where they're so distressed that it just it just it, it doesn't even look real anymore when i buy distressed denim now i try my best to buy pants that it potentially could have distressed like that on its own back then i wouldn't do that i would buy denim that is like it has like a million whiskers on it and like i would pay like 70 dollars for them and not only is there whiskers on the front there's like a crazy amount of whiskers on the back of the pants too um just like huge huge holes or like one side would have like a huge amount of holes and then the other side would only have like half the holes and i would buy a lot of it and it was like a it's like a problem i, I still probably have uh some of that denim even today but yeah a, a lot of that stuff i look back on it and i'm like man like what exactly what what was i thinking like <laughs> <laughs> it's like I should have just saved all that money and then go buy like actual designer pants which I didn't do and now looking back on it, it was kind of like a learning lesson right uh, but the, again the, a lot of that stuff is still sold in stores today I'm sure people that are watching this may or may not know what I'm talking about but if you if you don't then you know head to your local hood store I'm sure you'll you know what I'm talking about so I tried to explain that one as best as I could so let's go ahead and move on to the next one item okay, so for the next one this is like on add-on from the last where I talked about crazy like baggy clothes and then like super distressed denim and then after that and during that same time or like right before I transitioned out of wearing that stuff was rubber bands rubber bands were huge half of high school and middle school I wore rubber bands on the bottom of all my pants I would I would buy huge like 34 36 purposely baggy dickies and then I would take a rubber band and I would put it on the bottom of my, my pants. Like literally, if you're watching this and you're like 18 years old or like you're 20, 21, like you have no idea what that is. Like people do not wear rubber bands on the bottom of their pants. But just mind you, it was big. Some people did it right back then. I remember in middle school, some people would just do it because it was like an in thing, it was a trend. And people would put it on the bottom of their leg, but they'll bring it up all the way. So then it's like, it kind of looks like sweatpants. You have one up and one down, which was kind of cool back then. And then some people would like, they wouldn't do it right. So they'll have like, I guess maybe they couldn't afford to buy new baggier pants. So their pants were kind of like tight, but yet they would put rubber bands on the bottom. So you can clearly see that they have rubber bands on the bottom of their pants. And it, <laughs> and it just, it just looks super funky. It, it didn't look right at all. But to quickly transition to the next one, this next one also has to do with this it still has to do with pants after the trend of rubber bands left uh what came next 
I, I think this was high school. So maybe junior year, sophomore, junior year, high school, everybody was wearing jabots. Like, I mean, out here in Northern California, I don't know if it was hot in Southern California. Maybe it was hot in New York. I don't know, but it was just like a West Coast Bay Area thing to like have jabot jeans. And like, now that I look back on it, that's definitely gotta be like one of the worst trends that like i've ever bought into uh, one it was super expensive okay two they were huge the pants were massive i'm sure the pictures that i'm going to show you here they like those pants you buy a size 32 no forget, you buy a size 30 but the but the leg is like a size 40 like for for a size 40 person like it was huge the pants were massive i think what happened is that after everyone stopped wearing the rubber bands on the bottom of their pants and that trend just qu kind of quickly left the jabot jeans because jabot jeans had the straps on them and then on the bottom it had the straps too so then you can strap up the bottom as if it was like rubber bands and back in the day don't get me wrong i know i'm talking smack about the jabot jeans but back then jabot jeans jabot jeans was heaven sent okay then you when you pull up to school and the jabots is like I mean, for me, I look strange because just imagine like a scrawny little Asian kid, you know, in high school with not that many friends, but I had like Jabot jeans and like a matching shirt. I would wear like the faded blue Jabots with green straps on them. And then I would buy <laughs> like a blank, a blank, like tall tee, a green blank tall tee on top of that. And like a, a, a green pinwheel San Francisco hat. Like I look like a clown, like <laughs> just straight up just straight up look like a clown. I think quite possibly it was probably one of the most cringiest moments of my uh, fashion venture, I guess you could say. I don't even know if you call that fashion back then. It was just in, like a lot of people did. It was just, it was just in at the time. And a lot of rappers talked about it, especially Bay Area rappers talked about it. So, you know, it's, it's what it was, it's what it was. I don't know. Okay, so the next one that I got up, which was probably 2000 and so 20, 2009 to 2010 to 2011, I think even going onward, a lot of people that I grew up with, and also myself included, love to wear cargo pants. And I know cargo cargos right now are back in because Travis Scott basically ruined it for all the cargo lovers, which I'm still a cargo lover, but I'm, I've drifted away now because everybody loves cargos as if it's a new thing when really it's not that new anymore. But before I digress, back then khaki cargo shorts were in and it was big, it was heavy, it was physically heavy like when you put the the cargo shorts on like they're massive okay like it would again it would be the same scenario it'd be like you buy a size 30 or a 32 waist but the legs are freak they're huge they're just the biggest things you've ever seen they look like soldier boy when he wears shorts except his shorts kind of look like long pants because they were just so big and so long like the cargos were huge and then anytime you put anything in the cargos you would always, I don't know, for some reason you would think that, oh, I'm gonna put my wallet inside of the cargo pants when really like that ends up being like a big weight on the bottom of your pants, which is like kind of makes your pants sag. And it doesn't really look that good. It didn't look good, good to begin with, but then it made it look even worse because now you got like these big bulgy things on like the side of your pants. And it just, it just was a really bad trend. I think who influenced it, if I already just say this really quick, is I think Wiz Khalifa, but I, I think it's before Wiz Khalifa, I think the Currency, when Currency really started kind of like branching off from YMCMB uh, and Lil Wayne and all that, and then he started doing his own thing with Jets, like his attire, and maybe even still today, I don't know, but his attire was like really baggy khaki shorts with like a huge t-shirt, fitteds with Jordan 4s on, and that was the look. That was like the look, you know what I mean? I followed that look for a long time. And also transitioning from like khaki shorts after the khaki shorts, it was like camo shorts because of Wiz Khalifa. And then it was like the LRG camo shorts, which I don't know if anyone's watching this. Maybe you you like those too. But that was like that camouflage that LRG made back then. It was big. Uh, but looking back on it, of course, you know, to go on to the topic of this video, like those were all terrible trends, like for sure. Those are like, if I ever find a photo of myself rocking the khaki huge cargo shorts, like I will try my best to like put it back on the vlog somehow. But um, it was it was really bad. Okay, looking back on it. I don't okay, and for the last trend that is kind of still going on right now, but was really big in high school that I totally regret even investing any money to. Actually, no, it's not really high school. It was like out of high school. It was like uh, freshman year, sophomore year, college. Um, but it was just really big to buy designer belts. Again, I know designer belts is kind of it's not really. I don't know. I don't really think designer belts is that big right now. 
people are more worried about like their t-shirts their jeans and their shoes like a hype sneaker right now uh, but designer belts was really big back then it was huge like it was so big to a point where like people would invest hella money into their belt but like everything else about their outfit was just whack um and i might have been victim to that like i would pull up to school in college with air maxes on but i had like a louis vuitton belt on like and, and like the, that's not even the worst part the worst part about the trend was two things either you wore the designer belt and you like you you tucked your shirt in to like make sure people see that you had like a designer belt like hey look i got louis vuitton belt on which is like the most a uh, cringiest thing that I can think of at this point especially if you only tucked in the front and you didn't tuck in the rest looking like a I don't know I don't know what that is it's like you're trying to show people that you have money when really you don't because you spent it all on the belt so either you did that or which is even worse you probably wore the belt but your t-shirt was so baggy that it just goes right over your belt and then there goes your outfit because you just spent all your money on a designer belt but nobody knows that you have a designer belt on because you, because you are now wearing a tall tee or like a big baggy shirt that you got from the corner store. For sure that is, that's terrible, okay? Like money definitely just not well invested into your wardrobe or just like in general, let's just not even talk about your wardrobe, like your money, like a lot of these designer belts like then and now are very expensive, right? They're like $500 or more or like $300 or more. Some of them reach up to like $600 or maybe even a thousand bucks for like Hermes. But like, dude, like it was huge. It was a big thing. And I definitely obsessed over it during those times. And I, I wanted like all these different belt buckles and stuff. I had a couple different uh, Damier like Louis Vuitton belts that like, I don't even know what those, where those belts are at this point. And do I still wear them? Like, hell no. Like I definitely don't wear designer belts anymore. Now this one arguably could potentially come back. I can definitely see it coming back. Maybe not so much in the fashion that it was before, but maybe something different. I don't hear a lot of rappers talking about um, designer belts anymore. I just, I don't see, you know, Instagrammers doing the designer belts. The only designer belt that I've seen that's been like super like hot within the past like year and a half to two years is the off-white belt but as we know like the off-white belt at this point is so overwashed like it is like that is like a hype beast like go-to like if you were to start a starter kit for a hype beast it would like be a supreme bogo an off-white belt and like off-white is you know sneakers from the 10 like that would be like their wardrobe and maybe like minimal jeans you know who i'm talking about okay it's kind of become in this category where designer belts are now just for like people that are just really rich because you're now buying something that nobody can see at that point, right? I don't know. Last thing I'll say about this whole topic of these trends that uh, are super cringy is um, I think everybody goes through these type of like things, right? And it's not necessarily you went through the baggy pants era and the, the designer belt era and like the cargo shorts or whatever. But like, I think even right now, there's so many trends that you know 10 years from now five years from now whatever you're gonna look back and be like wow that was like what the what why did i spend that much money on it like why what was i thinking like it didn't even look good like it looks really ugly everyone goes through their uh whatever fashion trend at the time that they thought was dope and then looking back on it it's really not that great anymore um, but th these are all like learning lessons right if you get into this and i hate to say that i'm a fashion youtuber because majority of a lot of stuff that i present is really just kind of you know mediocre compared to like people like unknown vlogs or the fashion archive most people like love fashion fashion like i love like the older stuff like og babes and i do like some current stuff from here and there but you you get to learn your style as you go and it takes years it doesn't happen overnight it's not something that you can completely jump into uh and like all of a sudden you know exactly what you want to wear you're gonna go through mishaps of different styles that you end up basically looking back on it and it being cringe you know what i'm saying like so i, I just kind of like want to put that out there for this video i would love for you guys to get up on the comments and kind of argue back and forth about what you think is cool what you think is not cool and then also tell me what fashion trends that you went through you know since middle school till now that you totally regret jumping into i would love to hear some of them maybe it might spark some idea for me to make another video moving forward. Anyways, with that being said, make sure you guys and girls keep it locked right here for all your latest information from music, fashion, to culture. It is your boy. I'll see you next time. Peace.